We got a question from Jeff. I was wondering if you feel that either double kettlebell swings and or cleans would yield a transfer transfer of strength to barbell deadlifts. Well, no, absolutely. <laughs> but here's the deal, man. And and Jeff, I've mentioned this story before, so I want to be I want to be a little careful here. Now, if you read. Uh, Return the kettlebell by Pavel. He he does talk about this this person that did three sets of twenty, uh, it with double kettlebell deadlifts, which are not very hard, but up their deadlift. But I have my own story, and m my story is this: is I entered a, I, I was asked by our, the the captain of Utah State's powerlifting team if I would lift as their hundred kilo lifter on Saturday. Now, the, the issue was he asked me on Thursday to lift in a meet on Saturday because their, their 100 kilo lifter, which surprised nobody, dropped out because he was a, uh, yeah. Being on the platform is a lot different than being in the gym. Um, and so I did, and I waited at 9 a.m. on Saturday, and on 3 a.m. Uh, Sunday morning, because powerlifting takes years to go through their meets, uh, I asked the official, what's more than that weight in the bar? And he said 628. So I went out and deadlift 628 to be the last to be the last lifter of the contest. And yay for me, aren't I wonderful? The thing is, you got to understand, I never once deadlifted preparing for this. Never. Uh, I, the only time I've ever deadlifted was both of them were on bets. And just to break gym records or prove Bobarillo <clears throat> that I was strong. So the strange thing about deadlifts, especially now, now people keep asking me, Dan, how do you know if you're a hinger or a squatter? Well, I wrote a book called Easy Strength Omni Book, available at easystrengthomnibook.com, where I explain it. And I'm gonna, I'm not gonna go into the hinge and squat thing, but I am born to hinge. So for me, when I do double kettlebell swings and double kettlebell cleans, like you say, my deadlift will be better than someone someone else because I'm born to hinge and I'm born to press or at least that's how I am whether it's DNA or just choice I don't know so anytime you do a, and it's the it's the strangest thing Jeff and I and I, and, and I see it all the time in sports especially in my field is we call it the what the heck effect where you'll do this thing and you'll improve that thing. You know, there's a picture of me and it's in, in fact, it's in uh, Enter the Kettlebell. And I have this look of absolute shock. It's when I added 70 feet to my javelin personal record. And afterwards, people asked me what the secret was. And honestly, the secret was, <laughs> I, w I was teaching kettlebell certs and so I was trying to stay in shape for kettlebell certs. So I was doing lots of kettlebell work. I was doing all these strange mobility exercises with the kettlebell. It was right after I came up with the goblet squat. Uh, I was doing these halos and all these different things just to prepare myself to work at certs. I was doing a lot of snatches so I could pass the thing at certs because my good friend, Brett Jones, always thought I needed to do the snatch test. So every time we met together, I snatch test. So I was always in shape to do the snatch test. I was doing kettlebells every day. Sure, I still uh, was weightlifting, but I wasn't weightlifting that much. So when I got to that track meet, I rolled down the runway, you know, ruined my shoelace, uh, shoelace kept my hands high, whipped that thing, and it was gone. It was, uh, it was just a shockingly beautiful throw. Why? I don't know. So sometimes superior performance comes from the least logical directions. Um, you know, sometimes you'll watch a team play completely over their head and just be better that day against a better, clearly better team. In our world of strength, sometimes we just, sometimes you just can't make these straight lines, even though I guarantee most of our listeners want me to say that. 
If you bench press five times a week, three sets of three, your bench press will go up, bum, 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 bum. We all love it. We all love this illusion of uh, linear uh, uh, improvement, but rarely in life does it ever happen. Uh, for those of you who are in relationships, um, most of the time, people just kind of bump in relationships. They kind of bumped into each other or they just met somewhere very randomly. Uh, Harry Met Sally is... is is a real testament to that whole sh that whole idea. In the same way, in our weight room life, sometimes you just improve. So yes, I think I think that the double kettlebell swings and the double kettlebell cleans will carry over, and not just to a better deadlift, but probably even better Olympic lifting. One of the things I like about kettlebells is that I can get a lot more volume with kettlebell cleans and kettlebell swings than I can with the Olympic, uh, well, obviously you can't swing the barbell. Um, but I get in all that extra high reps, which at some level level seems to help. So to answer your question, I, I think it does. I, I think it does. I think, I think there is a carry over here. And uh, I know I've paused a few times, but it's, it's kind of like, when I see a baby smile, why do I just glow? Well, uh, I mean, I could probably figure it out, but I just glow when I see a baby smile. Or puppies. Uh, golden retriever puppies make me happy, okay? Why? I don't know. So sometimes when it comes to high-level performance, it's kind of like, why do golden retriever pu puppies make Danny happy? It's like, I don't know, but it does, so that's good enough for us. And that's an important thing. Put that in your hat. Sometimes things work because they work. And if you think too hard about it, you might take away the magic that makes it work. It's a good question. I, I appreciate it quite a bit, okay?